Why do Germans lack national pride? Typically, patriotism and nationalism are viewed as two separate, if not antagonistic, types of national commitment. The former is frequently associated with an informed feeling of community that takes pride in the adherence to democratic norms, whilst the latter is perceived as an exclusive and uncritical allegiance to the nation. Both have a significant normative component. Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we will be talking about why Germans lack national pride. Only recently did it become semi-acceptable to fly the flag in public in Germany, and even that required a significant football match. German Senator Cornelia Schmalz Jacobson has tried, but she just can't seem to get it out. She won't be able to utter that word. She continues, not even over my dead body. Could I say that I am pleased to be a German? I even find it challenging to sing the national anthem. She's not by herself. Generations of Germans learned after World War II, at least in the western portion of the nation, that Hitler's actions and German pride were incompatible. Germans had abandoned such patriotism at Auschwitz, whereas Americans could fly the stars and stripes in their yards and sing the Star Spangled Banner on the smallest occasion. Many Germans even enjoyed their lack of patriotism, finding comfort in their newfound European identity and seeing American patriotism as a sentimental holdover of principles that the 20th century had weakened. But currently, a number of factors have led to a rebirth of German patriotism and a fresh debate over whether it is acceptable to be a nationalist. President Johannes Rau, a social democrat, provided his own affirmative assessment in his year-end speech. He said, We may be very happy about many things in Germany and rightly proud about them. That simple word stoles, proud, coming from a man who has little authority but serves as a sort of moral arbitrator, has a special resonance. It was novel to start. For another, it demonstrated that the extreme right's catchphrase, I am glad to be a German, would no longer intimidate moderate politicians into avoiding references to German pride. A few weeks before to Mr. Rao's mention of pride, the opposition Christian Democrats Secretary General Lorenz Meyer set a new tone for the party by stating, I am proud to be a German. In this way, the Social Democrats and the Christian Democrats, the two major parties in our country, seem to have validated the idea of German pride. The change is explained by a number of developments, which may worry Germany's European allies who are always on edge about any hint of nationalism in the continent's most powerful state and constantly keep an eye out in the words of one German official to see that we do not raise our chins as much as an inch. The first is the incorporation of the 17 million former residents of East Germany, a nation that was fiercely patriotic and instilled in its people the belief that they had been the good socialist Germans who had battled Hitler and his capitalist cronies, that pride in the newly united Germany is still looking for a way to be expressed. The second is how the Berlin Wall less Europe's political landscape is evolving. Berlin now finds itself at the hub of a new Europe, with Poland, Hungary and other Central European countries expected to join the EU in the coming years. Germans are constructing a new chancellery and a capital that contrasts with Bonn, the country's old capital, by expressing ambition and pride. The third trend is the growing desire for normalcy among Germans or their desire to shed the label of forever villain that the mass slaughter of European Jews and other atrocities committed during Hitler's lost war gave them. The right to feel patriotic pride has been recovered and many Germans considered this as part of this new normal. The restoration of our pride according to George Schonbaum, a prominent Christian Democrat and Brandenburg state's interior minister, is a key component of the normalcy we are currently seeking. France successfully argued at a recent European Union summit meeting in Nice that Germany's special status could not be changed by arguing that despite having a much larger population and economy than any other nation in Europe, Germany shouldn't have a greater number of votes than any other nation in the EU. The German government protested but agreed, at least for the time being. When one of his boys returned from a trip to the United States, Mr. Schonbohm recalls the boy asking him, Dad, why can't we feel proud like that? More than 50 years after the end of World War II, Mr. Schonbohm stated that he thought national pride was natural and that a stable, democratic Germany had earned the right to it. German pride, though, still sticks in the throat for people like Ms. Schmalz Jacobson, a free Democratic Party member and a former senior official in Helmut Kohl's administration. When Ms. Schmalz Jacobson first went to school in 1941, she was six years old. Her mother took her aside. She was told by her mother, you'll hear a lot of things in school that we don't agree with and don't approve of. Keep your mouth shut, though. Ms. Schmalz Jacobson confirmed that she had indeed heard those things. She remembered it was all about wonderful Hitler, wonderful Germany, wonderful army, and horrible Jews. But soon we discovered that the reality was grim behind all the national celebrations. Children were instructed to gather old things such as discarded papers, leftover bones, and metal bits, and bring it to school as the conflict progressed. 
The weight of the stuff was then read out along with the names of each child. The young Ms. Schmalz Jacobson was unable to participate in the exercise because her parents, who opposed Hitler, declined to do so. She suffered shame. She eventually begged her mother for something to bring to school and one day discovered herself in possession of two chicken bones. She was introduced before her belated contribution to the war effort was scathingly noted. 200 grams of chicken bones. Her mother was summoned in and asked to explain the family's pitiful offering following this additional humiliation. My mother inquired what she should believe when her daughter was constantly educated about the wonders of Germany, the superiority of Aryan children and the greatness of the country, and then asked to pick trash. Ms. Schmalz Jacobson recalled. Even today, garbage lurks beneath claims of German pride or patriotism, according to Ms. Schmalz Jacobson. The National Democratic Party's buttons, which read, I am proud to be a German, sum up the remnants of revanchist nationalism and the shards of revisionist history. Many of her countrymen share this opinion and even identify as Europeans rather than Germans, which is unique in Europe. But a growing number of supporters of a new German pride and its steadfast opponents have split the nation more than ever. Sociologist Micah Brumlich stated that German pride is a specific challenge. In the West, we made our best effort to cultivate a nuanced sense of patriotism in the Constitution and the good that Germany has accomplished since the war. However, the nationalism was more overtly nationalist in nature in the East. When it comes to our current displays of pride, we must exercise extreme caution. The majority of Germans are reluctant to publicly declare their affection for their nation. When it comes to local patriotism, or local patriotismus in German, which, in contrast to nationalism, denotes the liking or preference for one's own city or region, this is absolutely not the case. It appears to be a much greater source of pride for Germany than anything else national. What I've discovered about it is as follows. Do not fall for the fallacy that local pride is merely a matter of football team rivalry. However, certain local conflicts predate even the earliest versions of football that have been recorded, which date back to the 2nd and 3rd centuries BC. For instance, the well-known rivalry between the two major Rhineland cities of Cologne and Dusseldorf is based on historical and economic events, even though it may be celebrated folklorically on a sporting and cultural level. Local rivalries, such as those between Mainz and Wiesbaden, Frankfurt and Offenbach, or Dortmund and Gelsenkirchen, to mention a few, sometimes involve nearby cities. To try to ask a Mannheimer what the most stunning location in the nearby city of Ludwigshafen. Naturally, the Rhine River Bridge to Mannheim would be the answer. Even so, local pride can be felt outside of the usual conflicts between adjacent cities. There are several invisible borders separating unauthorized areas in Germany. One of these is the dressing you select for your potato salad. You can either support the vinegar and broth squad or the mayonnaise team. Swabia and Baden Two neighboring regions that are both a part of Baden-Württemberg and southern Germany have a long history of conflict. However, there has been an increase in anti-Swabian feelings, or Schwabenhass, in other regions of the nation. This phenomenon even has its own English Wikipedia entry. Germans in general tend to view Swabians as stingy, avaricious, and greedy. They have been blamed for both bringing narrow-mindedness to the usually liberal city of Berlin and also aiding in the gentrification of some neighborhoods. Swabians were even accused of modifying the nature of the city through their attitudes. The competition between the inhabitants of Baden and Swabia is still the fiercest. You don't trust me? Simply inform a Karlsruhe, Baden resident that they reside in a Stuttgart neighborhood, Swabia. Blessings. With this, we conclude our video. We appreciate you helping us keep it going by watching. The best way to support our channel is to watch another episode. Thank you for tuning in. To ensure that you never miss an episode, please subscribe to the channel.